שלום. שלום וברכה. So we're, we'll get it through the idea that it's not uh, pleasant to talk about death. That's it. We're through that part. What are the, tell us about these uh, halls, very impressive, modern halls. You don't call them caves. We'll talk about the caves. Tell us what they are, first of all. Okay. First of all, as you said, as you mentioned, the subject is not discussed on Friday night table. Mm -hmm. And uh, usually it's uh, in, in a very close uh, circle of people that are thinking about the future. Uh, I'm sorry that I'm using myself. I'm not, uh, I hope I'll be able to explain to you exactly how it started. I'm the seventh generation, son of the son, who deals with Chavra Kadisha. That means what was until now will continue. All the generations, at least from the, second, from the time of the second temple until today, they buried more or less the same system. Perhaps not in a cemetery, but more or less the same system. And somebody had to, to break the idea that uh, this is the way because of a few reasons. The first reason is we have to illuminate as much as we can the open space for life. We don't want to lose space and uh, use it for the dead. So we're talking about a real estate problem. It's also a real estate Especially problem. Especially when we're talking about Jerusalem. Right. Uh, not only Jerusalem, Eretz Israel at all is not a big country. Israel is a small country. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, everyone who is born, one day, will be, have to be buried somewhere. Luckily, meanwhile, we've got about 35,000 people who pass away every year in Israel, but we get about 100,040 new babies every year. Wow. So altogether, we have, to think, we have to think. So, so take us down. Take us okay. down underground. Yeah. What do we have in these uh, burial halls? Until about 20 years ago, we had exactly what we had all over the world. Every deceased is buried one next to the other in an open place, which means that we could bury more or less about 320 people per duna, which I don't know exactly in acres how much is it, but in one duna, we could bury 320 people approximately. Uh, the country cannot stand such an amount of ground that will be lost forever. And we, somebody had to think about different idea. Now the idea is not only the, the ground, the property. The idea is also the feeling of the people in the cemetery and the site, how should it look like in the halacha. In Hebrew we say, kvod hamet. You have to honor the deceased and his family whenever they come to the cemetery. Mm -hmm. And the new idea of those halls is beautiful idea and that's, what I, that's why I'm here to tell you that there is something new, innovated so, so, in Jerusalem. So we'll talk about also the halakha, Jewish law, regarding these uh, halls. But first of all, technically speaking, I understand that they're uh, very comfortable. The weather, the, the temperature, because we know in Jerusalem sometimes it's not very uh, easy. Whether it's the rain, whether it's in the summer, you're outside, you want to have a more memorial uh, session. So tell us about how it is in there. And also in terms of the security and the safety there's cameras, lots of uh, mechanism in there. First of all, the oldest graves that still exist in Israel are graves in caves under the ground. If you want to find a cemetery like we have today, the oldest one is Mount Olive, Harazitim, which is about, as far as we know, about between five and 600 years ago. And, and that is nothing. But if you go to Bet Sha'arim, it's a different place in Israel, you can find a cemetery which refers to Rabbi Yehuda Nasi to Rabbi, which is 2,000 years ago. So keeping a cemetery underground is much, much better than keeping a cemetery on top of the ground. And as you mentioned, the weather takes a lot of uh, um, reasons that causes that, uh, that situation. The reason is that inside the hole, you don't have rain, you don't have sun, you don't have uh, snow, and it's, it's very convenient. Mm -hmm. And in Yerushalayim, this year and a few years ago also, already also, uh, the snow was quite strong and it bro broke all the trees on top of the tombstones. Graves, wow. You can see that all over Europe. If you go to an old cemetery in Europe, you'll see fallen trees on the cemetery, on the tombstone, 
And it's really a lot of work to upkeep, especially cemeteries that are bound already, that nobody goes into the cemetery anymore. That doesn't happen in those holes. Everything is underground. Nothing is growing, that's true, but it's like a building at home. I don't have a garden inside my flat. I have trees, I have, uh, I have uh, flowers, I have all that. But altogether, the cemetery looks beautiful, completely different than what we are used to. I invite everybody to see it. Now, uh, in terms of halakha, I understand that you have acceptance and encouragement even from important rabbis. It took us about six years from starting thinking about the idea until we finished the first grave. And every move had to be consulted with people of the halakha. And if there was a difference between Sfaradim, Ashkenazim, or more orthodox, less orthodox, we always did the top that was needed and we went always lechuma to take the the highest standard of the halacha. So, which rabbis did you? All uh, the chief rabbis of Israel and the chief rabbis of Jerusalem. If people will have time, we've got here outside, in their voice and pictured that they are saying, stating that this method of burying is 100% according to the halacha. Not many know that one of the famous funerals that just took place not long ago. Ended up, the grave was in your uh, new burial. Yeah, let me tell the story because an interesting, it was an interesting story. Uh, not long ago, passed away in Jerusalem, uh, Mrs. Pollard, Esther Pollard. Esther Pollard. And uh, when her husband came to our office, we asked him what kind of grave he wants, and we offered him also a grave in, that, in those holes, underground holes. He says, no, 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 I was enough in the dark, I don't want anything in the darkness. Mm. We didn't argue, we could, uh, we could understand what he said, and we offered him a different place. When he came to see the place, he said, you know what, since I'm here, let me go into the holes, and I want to see the underground holes. He came in and a minute later he said, this is going to be the place, the resting place for my wife and for myself after a long life. We felt that we did something correct. People think that being buried underground is very, very unpleasant, but it isn't mm -hmm. so. It's beautiful and nice. As you mentioned, temperature, okay. quietness, all that. Let's, let's end with the crowd we're talking to here and explain to us how relevant this is also for Jews from around the world. Okay, first of all, it's, it's relevant for everywhere in the world if people want to not to lose ground and to use the ground for, for life purposes. But since Yerushalayim, the holy city, is the, a place that a lot of people from the diaspora want to be buried there, either their children make aliyah and they want to be buried there, or they think once they buy a plot, their children come every year to the yard site to visit, the, to visit them at the grave. So a lot of people from all over the world, Jewish people, buy plots in Jerusalem. And I think that even if you don't buy plots, at least knowing there is such a thing which is completely new. It's a place to visit as well. You're right. It's okay. also a site to visit. Hanania <laughs> Shachol. Thank you very much. And we all should uh, pray to live till 120, but it's important to know all this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Next time I'll speak about Brit Milah.